In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to divide one polynomial function by another. And we're going to do so with an example. And that's the one we see here. We're given two functions, one of which is f of x, which equals to 2x to the power of 4 minus x cubed plus 3x squared plus 5x plus 4. And the other function, g of x, which is equal to x squared minus 1. And we need to divide f of x by g of x, and we need to give expressions for the quotient function q of x and the remainder function r of x. So I'll start by moving the question to the side, like so, and now we can get started. So to be clear, what we need to do here is find an expression for f of x divided by g of x. In other words, that's an expression for 2x to the power of 4 minus x cubed plus 3x squared plus 5x plus 4, all of which is being divided by x squared minus 1. The way I'm going to do this is to present this a bit like a long division with whole numbers. That is, I write 2x to the power of 4 minus x cubed plus 3x squared plus 5x plus 4, and I add a sort of table around it, like so. And on the left-hand side of this table, I write the polynomial by which I wish to divide this function. So that's x squared minus 1. Now, just to be clear here, this x squared minus 1 is g of x. That's the function by which we wish to divide f of x. And f of x is the function I wrote at the top here. That's f of x. OK, now the first thing we need to do is look at the leading term of g of x, so in this case that's x squared, and to figure out what we would have to multiply it by to reach the leading term of f of x, so that's 2x to the power of 4. And it doesn't take us too long to see that we would have to multiply x squared by 2x squared for it to equal to 2x to the power of 4. So I go ahead and write 2x squared all the way at the top of the table, like I've just done there. Now that that's done, I multiply this entire expression, x squared minus 1, by 2x squared, and I write the result beneath the top row of this table here. So let's go ahead and do that. 2x squared times x squared, well that's 2x to the power of 4, minus 2x squared times 1, well that's just 2x squared. So I write minus 2x squared. Notice that I'm writing this 2x squared here directly beneath the x squared term I have on the top row. And now, we don't have to do this, but I like to write plus 0x cubed here. And the reason I like to do so is just to highlight the fact that I haven't forgotten any x cubed terms. It's simply that the coefficient is 0. I now subtract this entire expression from the top row, and I present it a bit like a long subtraction. So, we have 2x to the power of 4 minus 2x to the power of 4. That's equal to 0, so the x to the power of 4 term is gone. Next, we have negative x to the power of 3 minus 0x to the power of 3, so that leaves us with negative x to the power of 3. We carry on, we have 3x squared minus negative 2x squared. That turns into 3x squared plus 2x squared, which is plus 5x squared. And finally, we have our 5x and our 4 at the end here, which we can just carry down. So that's plus 5x plus 4. We can now see that at this bottom row here, we have a new polynomial function. And we repeat the process we've just followed. In other words, we look at the leading term of g of x, which is x squared, and find what we need to multiply it by to reach the leading term of this polynomial, which is negative x cubed. And it doesn't take us too long to see that we need to multiply x squared by negative x for it to equal to negative x cubed. So we write negative x at the top here. We now multiply x squared minus 1 by negative x and write the result directly beneath this bottom row here. So that would be negative x times x squared, which is negative x cubed, minus negative x times 1. So that's minus negative x, which turns into plus x, which I write directly below the x term of the row above. 
And once again, although we don't have to, I like to write plus 0x squared to highlight the fact that I haven't forgotten an x squared term. Now that that's done, I subtract this entire expression from the one above it, which leads us to negative x cubed minus negative x cubed. Those two terms cancel out, so they're gone. Then we have 5x squared minus 0x squared, which leaves us with 5x squared. Carrying on, we have 5x minus x, which leads to 4x. And finally, we have a plus 4 at the end here, which we can simply carry down. So we have plus 4. We now have a new polynomial, this quadratic at the bottom here, 5x squared plus 4x plus 4, and we start the process over. So we look at the leading term of g of x, which is x squared, and find what we need to multiply x squared by to get to the leading term of this polynomial, which is 5x squared. And it doesn't take us long at all to see that all we have to do is multiply x squared by 5 for it to equal to 5x squared. So I write plus 5 at the top. I now multiply the entire expression x squared minus 1 by 5 and write the result directly below this bottom row here. So that would be 5 times x squared, which is 5x squared, minus 5 times 1, which is minus 5. And again, although I don't have to, I write plus 0x. Now that that's done, I subtract that entire expression from the row above it. And that would lead to the following. We have 5x squared minus 5x squared, so those terms cancel each other out. And we have 4x minus 0x, which leaves us with 4x. Finally, we have 4 minus negative 5, which turns into 4 plus 5, which equals to 9. So we have 4x plus 9. And we now stop. This polynomial that I'm underlining in red is known as the remainder function, which we write r of x. And I know that that's the remainder function and that I need to stop there because the degree of this polynomial function is less than the degree of the polynomial function by which we're dividing f of x. Indeed, the degree of this remainder function r of x is 1. On the other hand, the degree of g of x is 2. Remember, when we say degree, we're referring to the highest power of x that we see inside the polynomial function. So as soon as we reach a polynomial whose degree is less than the degree of the polynomial by which we're dividing the function, we stop. It means we've reached the remainder function. The function we obtained at the very top of this long division is known as the quotient function, and we write it q of x. And so what we've just shown here is that f of x divided by g of x is equal to 2x squared minus x plus 5 plus 4x plus 9 over x squared minus 1. And to be clear here, this 2x squared minus x plus 5 is the quotient function. On the other hand, the numerator of this expression we have here, that's the remainder function. And at times we'll also use the quotient and remainder functions to rewrite f of x in the following way. We can state that f of x is equal to g of x times q of x, that's the quotient function, plus r of x, the remainder function. So in this case, we would state that f of x is equal to g of x, which remember was x squared minus 1, times q of x, which we just found as 2x squared minus x plus 5, plus the remainder function 4x plus 9. Now do make a note of this as it's often required in exams. And there we have it. That's the end of our first example on how to divide with polynomials. And that's it for this tutorial.